Hello everyone, Gara here and welcome to a brand new deck tech video. Today I'm gonna talk about this amazing hunter deck that I was playing in Dreamhack Bucharest. Let's just get right into it. Um, here's the deck list and this hunter deck is the definition of Hyrule. This deck evolves completely around barns and it is actually a deck that is made by Life Coach and I used it against Life Coach. And it was very funny. If you uh, you should check the broadcast if you missed it when I played against Life Coach and I used this deck. It was he was close to a mental breakdown um, while he was thinking about the traps and try to play around every trap. And he actually managed to play perfectly around every trap. But it was a very uh, yeah. It was a farce. It was pretty funny. So let's go over the list. Um, as I said, this deck completely evolves around barns. So if you get barns, you always keep it in every single matchup, going first, going second. Because this is the absolute win condition and it wins you the most games at turn 4 or with the coin on turn 3. So as you can see, the only minions that you can get with barns are Savannah Hyman and Ishari. And if you get Ishari, it can pull you Savannah Hyman or another Ishari. So if you watch the Disguised Toast video where he plays the Barnes Rogue, yeah, it, you can make some crazy stuff happening. It is kind of the same in Hunter, just that yeah, you can put a lot of defensive spells in a Hunter deck. And I'm going over this in a bit. So anyway, so if you get a Hyman on turn 4 and the Barnes, then it's already pretty disgusting for the opponent. It's an insane amount of value. And if you get Ishari, it's usually a win if your opponent is not a warrior and has an execute. A 10-10 on the board on turn 4 is just ridiculous. So, double tracking to just find the barns, preferably, or just to find follow-up play. And as you can see, there's a lot of quote-unquote bad cards in the deck. Like, you don't want to just get secret after secret. So... If you're holding a lot of secrets and you have the tracking, you're just oftentimes looking for either the bow, because the bow will get so much value in this deck. You, you're you playing so many secrets that you will have almost endless charges if you are not playing wasteful with your bow charges. So, and the opponent cannot really play around it, because you're playing traps that counter basically any move. Um, attacking phase, with, you can counter with the bear traps, explosive traps, and the freezing traps, um, or misdirection even. You can counter a spell use uh, with the cat trick. You can counter just playing a minion by the s b uh, with the snipe. So the opponent will be forced to proc secrets, and then you will get bow charges. So it's actually insane how much damage you can deal with the bow in, in this deck. So I would also always keep the bow just because you're running so many secrets. It's it's difficult to figure out which secret you keep in which matchup. Uh, freezing Trap obviously against Druid is not a bad keep. It, just to prevent innovate plays. Also a cat trick is pretty nice if you expect a turn to Vicro for innovate play. So you get a 4 attack minion on the board with stealth. Bat, uh, Bat Trap is pretty good against aggro decks. Or ex same goes for Explosive Trap. Uh, what is really annoying for this deck and what counters the deck pretty well is what you also see in the tournament is 1-1 one, one minions, especially Agent Squire. Agent Squire is such an annoying minion to deal with. Um, if you get an Agent Squire on the board and you manage to proc a Freezing Trap, you can later on play it for 3 mana and proc a Snipe. It's just super annoying. Uh, but if, your opponent, if you know your opponent doesn't play many 1-drops, um, then yeah, this deck can be super annoying and very effective against it. If you so like, if if you cannot play around a snipe with small minions, then you will get a lot of value from it. And yeah, you just play defensive and try to win with your super power cards like Call of the Wild. As you, if you follow the Bite Stone, it was like one of the banned cards. So you can imagine the power level of this card. Savannah Hymen also ridiculous. If you pull a Hymen from with the Barnes and then get another Hymen from the deck. Um, yeah, that's just insane to deal with. And then the Call of the Wild. Uh, Ishari is a card you never ever want to draw. Um, if you play Ishari on 10, like if you're for usually it doesn't even come down to that. You, at that point, you cannot even pull a minion from the deck usually. Or you pull the Barnes. Uh, just it's super bad. You're really hoping to high roll with this deck. So um, I had decent success. Um, there, I saw like a, a few people climbing to a high legend with this deck. And... 
Yeah, there's some cards that can be replaced. Obviously, the misdirection can be replaced, uh, but it makes it just so much harder for your opponent to play around stuff. Um, the power shot is also uh, kind of not uh, really good if you're not playing against the zoo. Unleash the Hound, also the same against Control, not really that great. Same goes for Druid. Um, those cards can be replaced with like deadly shots uh, or Hunter's Mark, whatever you feel like. Um, you n which matchup you want to improve. You can play Arcane Shots, you can play um, the um, as second look and load. You can you can change this deck to to your play style. But yeah, it really plays um, around Barnes. It's a very interesting, cool deck. It's very high high roll potential. And yeah, I hope you guys like it and enjoy this deck. L let me know if you guys liked it. Um, and see you guys in the next video.